Up next on Sci-Fi Fantasy, electronics for a static grass applicator. Hey everybody, it's Kenny Conklin from SciFiAnesty.com and welcome to another YouTube video. This is part two of the static grass applicator and in this video we're going to be going over how to set up the electro electrical portion of the static grass applicator so we could get it to work. And like I said in the previous video, this is not my idea. I've seen a few of these built before, but I have made modifications and safety precautions for this build that the other builds didn't have. So. Let's get over to the bench and start working on the electronics. Okay, for the first part of the electronics, what we're gonna do is work on the screen of the hopper. You're gonna need the bottom with the screen in it. You're gonna need a quick disconnect for the wire type that you're using, depending on what gauge. And we're also gonna need a piece of wire. So let me get to starting this and I'll show you what I'm doing. So we got all our parts and the first thing I did was I took a piece of braided wire. I split up the braid and I braided them into smaller ones. And then I have the front end here, which we're just gonna slide into the female portion of the quick disconnect adapter. On our stripper, it has piece in here that you could just put the portion in and it'll crimp it down. So you don't have to worry about flats or anything like that. And make sure it's crimped down nicely. That's crimped on there. And then I'll take my little burns omatic little blowtorch here and we'll heat up the end of it and shrink wrap it to the piece right here this way it stays and doesn't come out and we don't get any any other pieces of grass in there and when you're done be careful not to burn yourself all right so what we're going to do next is just pick a spot on your screen here and then start weaving the pieces through the screen. Once you have it weaved through the screen, just take all your braids and braid them up together. Okay, next up we're gonna be soldering the pieces to the mesh here. And just on a quick side note, if you can see my tip is pretty dirty from soldering that I was doing. And usually you have a wet sponge to clean your soldering iron off. This is just a side note. If you don't have one of these Hako 599Bs with the brass little shavings in here, get one. I mean, this thing, all you gotta do is punch it in a few times and look at how it cleans up all that crud right off of there. And then you can go right to soldering. So we're gonna get that on there. I put flux on here and we're gonna get this guy soldered up. And now to get this guy to stay up, and solder the back end. Which I really don't care if it looks pretty or not because like I said, I'm not I'm not a great professional at the soldering. I do my best and get it on there and I'm not worried about overheating it because there's no circuit board or anything on here. So that's pretty much it on the soldering of this. So our piece is definitely soldered on. I just cut down the excess and it's on there pretty good. Ain't going anywhere. And then just uh, we'll test fit our mail into there and that'll work that's just going to plug into there to give the high voltage electric into the screen right here so let's move on to the next part next we're going to work on the negative ion generator and this one single red wire is what's going to lead down to the screen of the hopper this is going to give us our high voltage portion and this is going to be your positive and negative going to power the only Modification that we're gonna to have to make to this and it's not gonna hurt it in any way is we're gonna cut off this little piece here That's meant to screw it onto something So we'll cut this off and then it'll fit into the one and a half inch PVC PVC pipe with no problem I'm just gonna use a little razor saw. I'll cut this off and we'll be right back Okay to get the wire through the handle and Base of your static grass applicator. What I did was I took a thin piece of wire. I pushed it through the hole on the bottom and I temporarily soldered it to the other piece. And then all you gotta do is pull it through and our wire is out. So we have no problem there and we can fit easily our ion generator down the bottom. And we'll just clip this off and go to the next part. Now that we have the wire through the base here, we're gonna take our quick end disconnect, the male portion, 
and we're just going to do what we did before and crimp it down. Make sure it's on there snug, which it is. That isn't going anywhere at all. So once the negative ion generator is in here, if you shake it, it is going to come up and down. So I was trying to figure out a way to keep it in there without, without it moving. And I have these little shot glasses that I use for mixing paint that I got at Party, uh, Party City. So I just cut the lip off it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove it in here. And then I'll use a popsicle stick or something and I'm going to shove it all the way down in there and it's going to keep it in place. And it's also be able, with tweezers, you'll be able to catch this end lip and pull it out if for any reason you have to change the negative ion generator. Okay, up next we're going to be working on soldering the power source to the momentary switch. But if you're not sure, like this one came with no documentation of where the positive and negative are on the leads on the back, especially when there's three of them. What you're gonna do is just plug in your power source and we know that the bent one is going to the needle in the middle here and that should be the positive. It should always be the positive and the outside should always be the negative. What you need is a multimeter and just set it to 20 volts. And if I can get my hands out of the way for you, touch the red positive to the bent lead and then touch the black and you'll see that my power source is actually putting out 12.45 volts. See if the other lead does anything. See the other lead does nothing. So you know this bottom one here is nothing and this one is gonna give us our negative. Now if, say, say it was reversed, we'll just throw these on here the wrong way. Say the black is the red and the red was the black and we were assuming that the bent one was the positive. You would touch it and it's gonna give you a negative symbol, which means your polarity is reversed and that's not the way you wanna hook up your wires. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pre-solder these together and I have thinner 22 gauge wire, uh, thinner sheathing I should say, on here and we're gonna use that on here and I'm not worried about it having a thinner sheath because it's gonna be inside the tube over here and nothing's gonna to happen to it. So let me pre tin these and then I'll solder the wires and then I'll show you the momentary switch. So we have our power source in here and we also have our ground ready. We put our alligator clip on there, we soldered it on so that's ready to go. Now when you're putting this ground wire in, depending on how big your ion generator is, you may want to put this in first and then bring your ion generator down or you may put the hole a little higher. So you just got to look and see test fit things before you put it in. So the next thing we're going to work on is our momentary switch. And this one we're going to set up to work as the light will always be on. This way we know there's power. And we're doing that because we want to know that power's on. If it's off, we don't know. Maybe we set this down on something metal and we get a nice big spark. So this is one of the safety features that's being added to. And it's also a safety feature because you're going to have to hold this switch in while you're shaking and then the power will be on instead of it constantly being on. We want to make sure when we're using something like this that we're safe. I know it's not real high voltage, but you still want to be safe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-tin this up. I'm going to add the wires and get it into the base. So this is the soldering job, which is horrible, on my momentary switch. I didn't show you how I soldered it up because you're better off looking at the documentation these come with to make sure you're doing it right because each one may be different of how things go. I also didn't put the little loop thing on here because I wouldn't be able to solder all my wires. I actually made the hole tight enough where I can just jam it in there and it stays. So if I have to get it out, I can. And it works like that. So let's get to the plugging in and see if the light comes on. I go. So time to plug it in and see if it lights up. Yay, we have a light. So once you plug it in and the light is on, it lets you know that power is coming to the unit. Now I'm not gonna keep it down here. So I got the momentary switch in here. I actually have to hold it in for the power to flow through to here. I'm not gonna touch it because I don't wanna get shocked. And then once I let go, no more energy to the screen itself. So with this being done, that means it's time to test the sucker out. Okay, so what I did was I set up a board. Half of it I used one color and did it the old-fashioned way of just spreading glue 
dumping stuff on and patting it down and you can see how lumpy it gets and everything like that. So I put a different color. I don't want to touch the screen because I'll get shocked. Different color. Actually, no, I won't get shocked. I'm sorry because I don't have the momentary switch in. That's the safety thing. I put a different color in here. We're going to hit the switch and we're going to start doing our static grass. And you can see how it fills up so much better than the other way. You can see it hopping around on the outside too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a break because I'm going to do it in small patches and we'll fill in the rest of this. Okay, I'm going to try a technique that I saw on another channel. Actually, I, don't, I wish I knew the channel so I could say it. But all they did was take the, the ground and touch it to the glue and went like this. I want to see if it works. I tell you what, it's flying right towards my hand <laughs> and it is sticking so up. There, but you can see the difference with actually putting the screw in and touching the, the lead just to the glue. With the screw, it stands up much higher and this is a nice, and I already shook it off, this is a nicer patch of grass than this or this and I'll shake this one off now too and we'll see how that came out. You can see it's sticking up by touching it, but the best way is definitely by putting a nail or a spike or something in there. This way the electricity flows a lot better through it. So I would go with this method over this method or this method because this definitely gave us a nice, nice piece of grass. And when you touch it, it feels like when you got a crew cut. So that's pretty much it. So that's it. Now you have a completed static grass applicator that you can make at home yourself with a few parts for basically under $50 and you don't have to go out and buy, a, you know, a very expensive one for $150. You can make it at home and it'll work and you'll get to put down your static grass for HO scale trains up to big scale dioramas if you can find the right size grass for static grass, which I'm sure it's going to be tough to do. So if you have any questions or comments or you want to know more about the build that you weren't sure about just put it in the comments section below and i'll get back to you as quickly as possible thank you again for everybody that's been hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell if you're new here to these videos and you haven't done it yet please hit that subscribe and notification icon this way you can help the community grow thanks again everybody for stopping by take care and bye bye